welcome to this lecture so before proceeding to the topic of discussion in this lecture let's uh, first quickly recall what we have done in the past few lectures so in the last two lectures of this week uh, we have finished the proof of the correspondence between distribution functions on the real line and probability measures on the real line together with the Borel sigma field so let's quickly recall what did we mean by a distribution function so it was defined independent of any connection with uh, any probability measure or a random variable so it's simply a function taking values between 0 and 1 and it's non-decreasing right continuous with uh, limits at infinity and minus infinity being 1 and 0 respectively so corresponding to such functions uh, we have constructed probability measures and of course uh, when we originally defined the distribution functions it was through probability measures all right so that uh, gave you a correspondence between these two classes of things so the first collection of things being the class of distribution functions the second collection being the class of probability measures on the measurable space real line together with the Borel sigma field all right so with that setup uh, we finished that discussion in the last lecture all right so that correspondence proof is now complete but now we now move on to understanding that correspondence in a slightly more general setting so this is what we discuss in this lecture and as we shall see this is going to give us a larger class of examples of measures beyond probability measures including probability measures we will construct more types of measures including infinite measures so we will exploit this connection between certain class of functions and measures so this is of course extending the existing correspondence between distribution functions and probability measures so let us move ahead with the slides so in the previous lectures we have discussed this correspondence between probability measures on this measurable space and the distribution functions on R but recall in this setting that the correspondence between real valued random variables and their laws were also discussed in some earlier lectures right then what we have are two different correspondences one between random variables and their laws which are probability measures on the real line and you also have the correspondence between the laws and the corresponding distribution functions so as a consequence of these two correspondences we have that the three terms will mean the same things the terms being distribution functions on R which is defined independent of any connection with uh, probability measures and uh, random variables the second one is purely defined in terms of a probability measure so given a probability measure consider its corresponding distribution function so that's what this second term under quotes refers to and the third type is the distribution function of a random variable again given a random variable you look at the corresponding law and corresponding to that you look at the distribution function so you have these three types of objects these three types of functions and according to our discussions after all these correspondences has been established these three things mean the same all right so even if the distribution functions originally were defined independent of probability measures we showed that all distribution functions arise as this form that meaning that it's already a distribution function of some probability measure all right so that uh, correspondence gives us this kind of a uh, very useful identifications but then we are going to look into this correspondence between this class of functions and measures so in this lecture we are going to focus on a certain extension of this correspondence to a larger class of measures and of course you will get a correspondingly a larger class of functions so before we go look into the corresponding class of functions we again start off with whatever we did with probability measures okay so for probability measures we first considered probability measures then defined the corresponding distribution functions and later on we moved back from the class of functions to the measures so this is exactly what we are going to do now we are again starting off with a slightly general class of functions with the appropriate definition so what is this the class of measures so this this is the class of measures called the lebesgue stilges measures what do we do we take measures on this uh, now well known measurable space real line together with the polar sigma field take a measure call it a lebesgue stilges measure so this is more of an adjective so you will say that a measure is lebesgue stilges 
if it associates finite mass to all bounded intervals okay so take any interval of the form a to b where a and b are real numbers then a b any kind of open open ended or closed or left open right closed or or left closed right open uh, whichever combinations you take as long as you are taking two real numbers a and b and uh, looking at the corresponding interval ab so any type of things as i mentioned so that's a bounded interval so for all such bounded intervals what we want is that the measure of that interval should be finite okay so we want this for all possible intervals in the real line so if this happens for a given measure mu we call this measure as a lebesgue stringer's measure so what are examples of this so of course any finite measure will satisfy this because the total mass anyway is uh, finite so in particular all bounded intervals will have finite mass and finite measures of course includes probability measures so uh, we already have a quite a large class of measures which are examples of lebesgue stringer's measures but now the question is are there any examples of infinite measures which are lebesgue stringer's so that's the interesting question now okay so all finite measures including probability measures are examples of this type but what we would really would like to know is that are there any infinite measures which are lebesgue stringer's so we will see such examples which will turn out to be lebesgue stringer's all right so now as i mentioned a few minutes back so we again start off with this class of measures and look at a corresponding class of functions okay so motivated by the case of this probability measures we are now going to look at this class of functions associated or related to this lebesgue stringer's measures so what do you do take a lebesgue stringer's measure mu and fix a real number alpha so you will see this alpha basically is uh, playing the role of a parameter uh, you can fix it to be zero if you wish so given this alpha look at this uh, type of functions which we denote as f subscript mu alpha so again uh, if you were to fix alpha to be zero so this function will purely depend on the measure chosen all right so once you have fixed the value of the parameter alpha you, whatever function you are going to define is going to purely depend on the measure mu all right so anyway so fix the real number alpha and look at this function defined on the real line and taking real values okay so how is this defined so for any real number x you look at its three possible cases so x positive equal to 0 and negative so three cases so if x is positive you look at this type of interval open 0 to closed x so this is a bounded interval so this value as given uh, in the definition of a lebesgue stringer's measure this value will be some finite quantity so we add alpha to that okay so that's what it is so when x is a positive real number you assign this value compute this value and assign this value to the function okay for that point if the real number x is 0 you assign the value alpha to this function all right and if x is negative you assign this specific value that you first compute the size of the interval open x to closed 0 so remember x is negative here so you look at open x to closed 0 that interval so that's a bounded interval so this is a uh, again are some real number some non negative real number you subtract this value from alpha so whatever this value is you assign this value to the function okay so this is the definition of the function okay now what you can check is that for any real numbers a and b it doesn't matter whether they are a negative positive whatever you choose any two real numbers a and b then given this function what you can verify is that the increment of the function values now will exactly be measure of the interval left open right closed interval open a closed b okay so this you can check so just follow the definition of the function look at this increment Uh, look at all possible cases where both a and b are positive both a and b are negative or a is negative and b is positive so you have this kind of cases so again you could possibly include the case uh, when x equal to 0 so under all those possible situations you try to look at the increment of this function and uh, then uh, you compute this value and it will turn out to be that it's exactly the measure in terms of the measure mu of the left open right closed interval ab okay this is you can take it as an exercise but note that uh, this value whatever this is this is non negative by the definition of a measure so this quantity whatever it is this size will be non negative so therefore as a consequence of this we immediately claim that f mu alpha whatever function you have now defined is non decreasing and moreover you can also show this interesting property that if you take a sequence of real numbers xn decreasing to a real number x then you can consider this limit now okay what is this limit so you look at the function value at xn 
xn is a larger quantity so you would subtract the smaller quantity here so this quantity whatever it is as per the observation above this is nothing but the length of the interval left open x to xn closed so left open right closed interval but now take limit as n goes to infinity on both sides of this equality great so what happens to the right hand side so remember xn goes down to the point small x so therefore these intervals open small x to closed xn this will decrease and decrease to the empty set okay so therefore you simply use the continuity from above for this measure and therefore you end up with the measure of the empty set which is zero so that's a very important observation and remember just to keep things uh, complete uh, remember we are already given uh, sets which has finite mass so therefore uh, for whatever type of measures you are considering uh, measure of the empty set will be zero so just go back to the original discussion when we introduced measures so we said that if there is a set with finite mass then uh, you will get the measure of the empty set is zero that's good so therefore what you have actually managed to show is that if you have any sequence xn decreasing to x then limit of this function values will approximate this quantity okay so the limit of this will be exactly this quantity all right so therefore what do we get we have used this continuity from above at the empty set and we get f mu alpha is right continuous okay so this function whatever this is this becomes right continuous and we have also shown that this is non decreasing all right so this is simply generalizing the concept of a distribution function corresponding to a probability measure so there you had this uh, limits at infinity and minus infinity specified values we haven't talked about the values of the limits at infinity or minus infinity for the functions f mu alpha but we have already seen these properties that these are non decreasing functions and they are right continuous but a uh, important observation here is that depending on your value of alpha your function may take a negative value so for example if you are working with uh, x equal to 0 the function value is alpha right so if alpha you take to be something negative then the function value is negative okay this is allowed here so alpha is some real number as uh, taken above all right so this value could be negative okay so whatever functions we are considering here could take negative values even though their increments are now positive since simply because using the properties of the measure mu okay so these functions now could be negative so this is slightly the departure from the class of distribution functions that we have considered corresponding to probability measures all right but with that hand hand we are now going towards talking about related properties of distribution functions that we have already seen in connection with probability measures all right so if uh, mu is a probability measure uh, what you would really expect is that there should be an appropriate alpha such that f mu alpha is exactly the distribution function right so this is exactly what uh, we have been uh, pointing towards that since uh, this f mu alpha is defined corresponding to any lebesgue stirges measure and probability measures are part of that and this f mu alpha as seen above has this non decreasing and right continuous properties so you expect to have some connection with the distribution functions corresponding to probability measures okay so what you can choose to do is to figure out this appropriate value of alpha such that f mu alpha exactly gives you the distribution function of the probability measure mu in the case when mu is a probability measure okay so please work this out but now as a consequence of this identification that we have just mentioned you can make the following observation that in note 13 we have mentioned that these functions are non decreasing and right continuous so that's okay and put it together with this identification with the uh, distribution function of a probability measure what note 13 is basically saying is that we are just simply extending the identification of distribution functions of probability measures to the suitable class of functions corresponding to lebesgue stirges measures okay so what is this suitable class of functions so as uh, discussed above in note 13 we are taking any lebesgue stirges measure and looking at f mu alpha and that is going to give us this class of functions which are which are non decreasing and right continuous okay so given any lebesgue stirges measure you have construct this uh, class of non decreasing and right continuous functions okay so to do that all you have to do is that basically fix the value of the parameter alpha and then you immediately get the function purely depending on the lebesgue stirges measure so corresponding to every lebesgue stirges measure you then get a function non decreasing and right continuous okay so as done before for probability measures we are now going to ask this question that can we go back 
So given a non-decreasing and right continuous function, can we construct a Lebesgue religious measure such that that will be the function corresponding to that measure? So that is the identification that we are now after. Okay. So again, our motivation is simply following the construction as done in the case of probability measures and the corresponding class of distribution functions. Okay. So we are simply following that idea. We would like to extend that correspondence to Lebesgue religious measures and this class of functions. So let's uh, try to look at uh, this class of functions and consider other properties of this class of functions. So here is an interesting exercise. So take a non-decreasing function. You don't need it to be right continuous. You can now try to show that limits at infinity and minus infinity will exist. Of course, exist in the sense that these could be taking values in real numbers and also could take values in plus or minus infinity. So essentially these limits, whatever they are, they can be infinity or minus infinity or some real number. So basically that's why we are writing it as that these limits exist but possibly taking values in the extended real line. All right. So take any non-decreasing function, then you get the limits. So these limits could be now infinity so or minus infinity. So be careful with this uh, case. All right. But then as done for the case of uh, distribution functions corresponding to probability measures, uh, so we follow the same description. So limit at infinity exists. So it could be something infinite, but uh, whatever that quantity is, we assign that value to f infinity. So that means that we say that uh, the value associated to the point infinity under the function f is that limit value. Similarly, consider the limit at minus infinity and assign it like this. Okay. So as done for probability measures, we are doing this uh, same uh, argument and therefore you can now think of this function f, uh, this uh, non-decreasing function uh, that you can think of it as a function from the extended real line defined on the extended real line and taking values in the extended real line. Okay. So we will clarify this concept in a minute, but as done for probability measures earlier in note 2 we can now recover values of or sizes of certain sets under the corresponding measure. Okay. And we can write down that uh, values or the sizes of the sets in terms of the corresponding distribution function. So this is what we had seen for probability measures, but we want to do the same thing for Lebesgue religious measures, but uh, whatever you want to do, we want to write it in terms of the corresponding functions that we have just seen. Okay. So given a Lebesgue religious measure mu, you look at the corresponding function f mu alpha and what you do is that uh, you look at this increment. As we have already discussed, this increment simply gives you the size of the set left open right closed interval a b. All right. But then you can extend this observation. You can extend this observation by saying that since mu is finitely additive, it's a measure. So it will, in particular, it will be finitely additive. So therefore, if you are given this uh, pairwise disjoint, this left open right closed intervals, then the value associated to or the size associated to this finite disjoint union will be simply the summation of these increments of the function values. All right. And more generally, you can also uh, get back the uh, size of the whole real line. Okay, under the measure mu by computing this limit. So again, we are simply following the calculations that is done for the case of probability measures. So you look at this intervals open minus n to closed n. So these sets increase and increase to the whole real line. So therefore you can use continuity from below and get this quantities that this uh, is the difference of the function values or the increment of the function values. But then you have just said that uh, these are non-decreasing functions. So therefore limits at infinity and minus infinity will exist. Therefore this difference, if you take the limits, it's exactly the difference of the two limits. Okay. So that is nothing but as per our earlier notation, these are the values assigned to the points infinity and minus infinity. Okay. So this is simply the shorthand notation for the limits as defined above. Okay. So therefore, the value associated to the whole real line under the measure mu can be computed as the difference of the function values at infinity and minus infinity. This is a very important observation and all of these uh, results that we are writing down here corresponding to the size of sets which we are writing in terms of the corresponding functions is simply extending whatever we did for the case of probability measures. So with that at hand, we would like to go back if we start with this class of non-decreasing functions which are right continuous, we will have to go back and construct the corresponding Lebesgue religious measure. But here before starting that construction, we now want to go back to an important clarification. What is this? 
that start with a Lebesgue just measure. As per the definition, the size associated to any bounded interval is finite. In particular, if you go back and look at now this uh, familiar interval, left open, right closed, minus n to plus n. Okay, so left open, right closed. So if you look at uh, such a measure, then what you happen to notice is that this size is finite as per the definition of a Lebesgue measure, and uh, you have the fact that the sets min open minus n to closed n these sets increase and increase to the whole real line. Okay, so the these sets increase and the union if you compute then it will turn out to be the whole real line because you are simply looking at sets within the real line so you will only get back the whole real line as, as you take the unions. So what you get at the end is that each of these sets has finite mass and these sets increase to the whole real line. So therefore any Lebesgue Stilges measure turns out to be a sigma finite measure. Okay. So this is exactly falling in the set off of the Carathoric Extension Theorem that was applied as the last step in the construction of probability measure corresponding to distribution functions. So this is a very important clarification and we are going to use this in our construction when we want to start the construction of a Lebesgue Stilges measure corresponding to a given non-decreasing and right continuous function. So we are going to use this fact. Great. So now what do you do? You start with a non-decreasing and right continuous function defined on the real line and taking values in the real line. So this is a real valued function defined on the real line. But uh, as mentioned above, this uh, non-decreasing function will have limits and uh, you can associate the these values of the limits at these points, uh, this plus minus infinity. Okay. So you can say that if at plus infinity is the limit at infinity, if at minus infinity is nothing but the limit at minus infinity. So therefore you can uh, as well consider the given function f from the extended real line to the extended real line. Okay, So the values at infinity and minus infinity could now be taking plus infinity or minus infinity as their values. So with that at hand, now we wish to construct a measure. And as done for the case of probability measures, we will again denote this set function by mu subscript f just to denote that it uh, depends on the given function f. Okay, So again what do you need to do? We just follow the same steps uh, as described for the case of probability measures. Okay, And uh, we want to avoid the repeat of similar arguments. But uh, in this case, in the general case, there are certain more technical difficulties uh, will be arising. And uh, what we do is that we take that these steps will hold true. All right. So we will assume that the steps are true. Many of the steps are very easy to verify whatever you have done for probability measure the same arguments will go through. But uh, one difficult step will be the case where uh, you want to verify the continuity properties of the set functions. Okay, As we see we will mention that. But many of the steps that you have already seen the same arguments will immediately give you the results and uh, we are just following the same steps. Okay, So we avoid the complete details write down the main steps. Okay. So first step is that we want to take this set function defined on the field of finite disjoint unions of left open right closed intervals. Okay, Here is our familiar field once more script C. We want to define this set function first on the field script C. So what do we do? You first start with the measure of the empty set which you assign the value 0. Then uh, look at the difference of the limits. So this is nothing but f infinity minus f minus infinity. So look at that quantity and assign that value as the size of the real line. Okay, But then uh, we are now familiar with uh, how to give the size for this left open right closed interval. This is simply the increment of the function values now. And uh, again uh, keeping the idea at hand that we want to describe a measure at the end. So therefore mu subscript f whatever it is it should be finitely additive. So therefore for finite disjoint unions of such left open right closed intervals you will look at this summation values uh, at the summations of the increments of the function values. All right. Great. So you have now managed to define the set function on the field script C of finite disjoint union of left open right closed intervals on the real line. Once you have that the next steps are now pretty clear. You will now claim that mu f is non negative. So again, uh, you have already started off with a non-decreasing function. So whatever increments of the function values that you consider are non-negative. So therefore, the values associated to all these sets that we have already considered in the field, they will get associated non-negative values. Okay. So therefore, the set function is non-negative. 
Moreover, by the structure as defined above for the set function mu subscript f, it's easy to see again as in the case of probability measures uh, that this set function that we have just defined becomes finitely additive on the field. So here comes the technical step which we are avoiding now is that uh, you can again verify that mu subscript f as defined above is continuous from above at the empty set. Okay, so this is very important. We again verify the same condition that mu subscript f is continuous from above at the empty set. And hence, this finitely additive set function that you look at here on the field is countably additive on the field. Okay, so you have this continuity property, put it together with the uh, finite additivity, you will end up with the fact that this set function is countably additive on the field. Moreover, since you already have observed that the size of the sets, this left open right close intervals is nothing but the increment of the function values. This quantity is now finite because original function is defined on the real line taking real numbers as their values. So in particular, the values associated to the points n and minus n are also finite, finite real numbers. So therefore, their difference is also finite. Okay. So therefore, the size of these sets are finite and uh, this uh, these sets as observed above, these increase to the whole real line. So this uh, mu subscript f, which you have now constructed, this is sigma finite by construction. Okay, this is very very important. So you now have a non-negative set function on the field C, which is countable additive. This is therefore this set function is a measure on the field C. Moreover, this is sigma finite. Okay, once you have all these quantities, you are now ready to appeal to the Cartesian extension theorem. And what do you get? You can now extend this set function which you have taken on the field C you can extend it to the sigma field generated by the field which is nothing but the Borel sigma field on the real line. Okay, So therefore you can extend this measure which you have obtained on the field C which is a sigma finite measure. You can extend this to a sigma finite measure on the real line together with the Borel sigma field. So on that measurable space you can extend this measure. So therefore, corresponding to this given non-decreasing and right continuous function, you have managed to construct this measure. Okay, And as done earlier for probability measures, if you now try to look at that corresponding function f mu alpha for these measures, you can now try to connect it with the given function f. So that connection, I leave it to you. Please try to check this. But what we are more interested in are examples of infinite measures that fall under this collection. Of course, uh, by this construction, uh, you can also construct finite measures, but these are essentially scaling of probability measures. Okay. Given a finite measure, if you divide the measure by the scalar, which is the size of the whole real line, you get back a probability measure. Okay. So that identification already implies that given an extension of a probability measure, you should be able to construct extensions of finite measures. So this construction should go through. All right. But then the idea is this that this construction is not really restricted to the class of finite measures. This will also include these collections of Lebesgue Stiglitz measures, which are in particular sigma finite. Okay. So as a special case of this, we are going to construct a very, very important infinite measure on the real line. This is called the Lebesgue measure on this measurable space real line together with the Borel sigma field. So what is this? So consider this function f of x equals to x. So this is the identity function. Okay. So this is non-decreasing and right continuous. Compute the limits at infinity and minus infinity. So for this function, it turns out to be infinity and minus infinity respectively. So for fx equals to x, you can immediately compute this limit values. But once you have this, you can now appeal to the construction above and look at the corresponding measure. So what is the corresponding measure appearing here? So again, you have the first observation that what is the measure associated with the whole real line? That is the difference of the function values. Difference of the function values, which are limits at infinity and minus infinity, right? So limit at infinity is infinity, you subtract minus infinity from that. So you are just adding infinity plus infinity, which is nothing but infinity. So here, what you are ending up with? is infinity minus of minus infinity, which is infinity plus infinity, which is infinity. So therefore, the measure which you have just constructed is an infinite measure. 
by construction of course it's a sigma finite measure and it's also a Lebesgue just measure okay but let's look at what happens to special subsets like left open right closed intervals so that is as per the description above this is the increment of the function values at the end points okay but that is nothing but b minus a if you take the interval left open right closed interval a to b okay so basically what you end up with is that you get back the length of the interval open a to closed b okay so this measure that we have just now constructed is very important for our later discussion you will see this measure useful for the description of absolutely continuous random variables and that description or that discussion will do in week eight okay but uh, this measure will be very important for us and in the next lecture we are going to focus on the properties of this measure we are going to refer to this measure as a Lebesgue measure on the this uh, measurable space real line together with the Bodel sigma field but this measure is very important so just to simplify the terminology we will refer to it as a Lebesgue measure on the real line okay so Lebesgue measure on the real line is an infinite measure it's a sigma finite measure it's a Lebesgue religious measure which associates lengths of intervals for the case of left open right closed intervals but then we would like to look at further properties of this Lebesgue measure in the next lecture so we will continue this discussion in the next lecture so we stop here